Good morning. Thank you for joining us on Get Connected uh, segment here on the Alabama Way. Um, my name is Tricia Crane. I'm the Executive Director of the Alabama School Connection, which is a news site devoted to covering K-12 education issues in Alabama. Um, I'm excited this morning to have with us Kenneth Paschal. Kenneth is the Director of Governmental Affairs for the Alabama Family Rights Association. Um, Kenneth, thank you for being here. Well, Trish, thank you for inviting me. And uh, you know, I really enjoy all the work that you have done and you thank continue you. to do for not just in your local area, but throughout the entire state. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Kenneth is going to talk with us today about the rights of non-custodial parents in public schools. Uh, it's something that, you know, unless it affects you, you might not be uh, very aware of, but I know that our teachers and our school officials are interfacing with all parents of children, and sometimes parents can hit a roadblock if they're the non-custodial parent. Before we get to that today, though, I'd like you to tell us, Kenneth, a little bit about the Alabama Family Rights Association and what brought you to this profession. Okay. Uh, well, the Alabama Family Rights Association uh, it was, um, it's a nonprofit organization. Um, it's not a father's rights or mother's rights. It's a family rights. And our right. focus is to uh, promote the concept that kids need both parents. Yes. Uh, even if the parents is no, no longer living together. Right. Um, and our goal is to reform the family laws in Alabama okay. to promote equality during a custody situation, whether the parents are divorced or even if the parents have never been married. We, right. The research shows kids thrive best when both parents are involved. Right. And what brought me to be part of this organization is I went through a divorce in 2008, mm -hmm. and uh, prior to that, I was actively involved. My daughter's not just at schooling, but in every elements of her life, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but um, after my divorce, I found myself labeled the non-custodial parent. Okay. And that is pretty much put you in separate, total separate class as mm -hmm. a citizen. And um, I found myself having a difficult, difficult time to be involved in my daughter's day-to-day -day school activities. Right. Um, I was um, temporarily not allowed to eat lunch with her anymore. Wow. And, but through, you know, after scheduling meetings with the, at this time, my daughter, she was in the private school, so I scheduled a meeting with the director, mm -hmm. and I shared with her that my desire was to maintain my relationship that I had prior to my divorce with my daughter. Right. So through that dialogue, uh, the director of the school was very receptive, you know, mm -hmm. and, they, and they adjusted things. They added me back to my daughter's contact uh, list and information. Uh, but the following year, my ex-wife, move our daughter from the private school to a public school. Okay. So I had to go through the entire process again, mm -hmm. uh, just simply because the label of non-custodial parent, you know, you're almost like treated as if you, does, you do not exist. Mm. And uh, in some schools, uh, even though the Alabama law clearly outlines that you both have equal access to your child school records and should be involved, right. some schools is not aware of that. That policy. Right, which is why that uh, you and I have have intersected many times uh, about family rights in schools. And this recently, you published a presentation that the good folks at your organization put together. Um, it caught my eye because it was so helpful. Um, you know, I love I love rules. You know, show me a presentation with some numbers and some rules, and 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 that's very helpful because everybody knows what to expect. Right. And this presentation, uh, really well put together, and um, covered all of the areas. And I know you have a copy of it there in your lap, uh, which we're going to refer to as we continue this conversation. But I should say that. Uh, the presentation is available on your website, yes. and um, the, your website address will be presented here. So folks will be able to get a copy of the presentation and actually look at it. We're going to talk about what it entails. Um, but you put this presentation together, your folks put this presentation together, um, because recognizing the impact that when a child does not have both parents, 
uh, involved in their child's education. You can quote some statistics that are pretty powerful, Kenneth, and I, I'm hoping that you can uh, uh, share some of those with right. us. What, what, has, what does research show us that when both children, uh, both parents, excuse me, are not involved in a child's education, what are some of the consequences? Well, um, I'm glad you asked that question because many people are just unaware of the, the, the impact, the domino effect it has when kids have, um, only, when only one parent is involved in a child life. The Alabama Department of Human Re uh, Resources website, along with the Alabama United States Department of Health and Human Services, mm -hmm. uh, their social science data shares that um, if only one parent is involved in child life, um, seven, there's a 71% chance that child will drop out of high school. 71%? Right. Wow. And 85% okay. of our uh, youth that's sitting in our prisons, 85% mm -hmm. of those only have one parent or had one parent involved in their, in their day to day life. Oh my gosh. 63% uh, of our youth suicides is, once again, only one parent involvement. Uh, so just a, a domino effect, you know, um, we are ranked uh, 44th out of 50 states in the country when it comes to this overall child well-being. Right. And that's in four areas. They, um, they look at education, mm -hmm. um, um, the economics, mm -hmm. um, and the family and community, but we rank 44th out of the country. And mm -hmm. the research shows that majority of that, well, our organization believes uh, the reason for that is such a low number is because of uh, kids having only one parent involved in their day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. And we do have, you know, it's sadly to say, there are parents, both mothers and fathers, that avoid their responsibilities as parents. Mm -hmm. But our organization was shocked to find out that it's not the number one reason in Alabama right. for kids to have one, one parent. It's, it's court-ordered when you label one parent a non-custodial parent, just make it really difficult for that parent to be involved, you know. Right, so you're saying either or. You're saying right. this parent has custody, this parent does not. Right. And I know that, um, I hope that, that we can have you back and we can talk more about some of the work that ALFRA, uh, the Alabama Family Rights yeah. Association, mm -hmm. is doing to um, improve the way that's looked at and to ensure the equal access for parents to their children right. inside and outside of school. Right. Um, one of the things, uh, I'd like to get started talking a little bit about what's in your presentation because um, oftentimes I want to be real clear here about the definition of non-custodial parent, okay? Right. We're talking about a parent, maybe, you know, we're talking about a child and there are two parents, mm -hmm. and maybe the parents were married and got a divorce, or maybe the parents were never married. Correct. Um, but there has been this designation that someone is a custodial parent and someone is a non-custodial parent. We're not talking about children or, or parents who have had maybe their parental rights terminated for some reason. Um, and and that that's a different sort of uh, discussion. Because those right. are That's a legal discussion to have. And what we're talking about is, is kind of straight up non-custodial parents and how do they interface with the school. Before, and you know what, before we get into the details, let's talk a little bit about that relationship. Because it's one thing to have a set of rules, right. but you have to start off with that relationship. What can you, what, you give good guidance on how to build relationships with schools. Um, can you share a little bit of that? Yeah. Well, just from my personal experience, um, you first have to uh, make sure you convey a clear message to the school that okay. your only purpose is to be active, be involved in your child life. Mm -hmm. It's not to you know, attend to school or participate in events, to focus on the other parent. It's right. to make sure you have a, a maintained relationship with your child. Right. Uh, as mentioned, um, absent of that, you place your child at risk of failure. You know? so, um, so you have to have that dialogue with the schools, you know, um, schedule meeting, attend the school conferences. Okay. And uh, if both parents is unable, don't have a relationship where both parents can do, attend together, that's okay. Right. You know, but you have to convey that to, um, to the school teacher, you know, to the assistant principal or principal, you know. And once you establish that, now in the school, they will, they will understand, they will see that your only focus is to be involved in the child academics, not mm -hmm. there to, uh, you know, address the issues from, the, the relationship standpoint with right. the other parent, but it's, your it's important to convey that your goal is to be involved and that you uh, assist the school in any way you can to help facilitate that relationship because 
many times the school they feel like they they have to they have to take a position also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you uh, just emphasize the most important thing is to have a relationship with your child and be involved in their school activities. Okay. You know, so I think that's the most important thing and. I say that because uh, you know we receive so many emails and phone calls on this topic, mm -hmm. and some parents they 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 mad, they frustrated, they bitter, mm -hmm. and they won't they desire to go to the school, and I said, well, you you're not going to really be received, you know, unless you change your uh, your approach. Attitude. Well, right. and I want to I want to let's take a break. We're going to take a quick break. Um, stay with us when we get back. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about how uh, maybe a parent would initiate that that the non-custodial parent would initiate that conversation with the school. And if things haven't gone well, you know, maybe a couple of tips for how to rebuild that relationship, how to approach it anew. Okay. Uh, and when I say relationship, I mean relationship with the school. So please stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Um, I'm Tricia Crane. We're talking with Kenneth Paschal today from the Alabama Family Rights Association mm -hmm. uh, about the rights of non-custodial parents in school. Um, oftentimes uh, there can be some roadblocks there um, and I know Kenneth could probably tell us story after story of what he hears from parents, um, non-custodial parents who try to even do simple things like have lunch with their child you know and maybe the the front office folks say wait you don't have custody and that really doesn't matter at public school and I do want to make this distinction what we're talking about here are parents who um, uh, don't have custody of their child because maybe even in a divorce order or in some sort of custody order, parents might never have been married, that the custody has been awarded to another parent. Um, both of us flinch when you say awarded, it's as if the child is a prize. But, um, so we're not talking about parents who may have had their parental rights terminated. That's a different discussion to have. But what we're talking about today is um, hoping to inform parents of their rights uh, at school. So right before break we were talking a little bit about um, making that initial contact with school because oftentimes if, a, if the person registering the child for school does not indicate that there is a non-custodial parent who might not be living with the child, um, Sometimes that information isn't even included, so you might not be on a, a mailing list or a contact list. How, as a non-custodial parent, what's the best way to make that initial contact, and when should that contact be made? Okay. Well, I had uh, spoke to several um, schools and superintendents of the Student Service, Services Department on mm -hmm. this topic, and they suggest that parents, if you're unable to be part of the registration process, to definitely uh, approach the school uh, within the first two weeks uh, of okay. the school year because if you wait to the, in the middle of the school year, once again, the, the people uh, at the front desk is going to be like, well, who are you? Uh, you're, right. not on, you're not on the access roster. Um, and you're not on mercy mercy contact uh, right. sheet. So it's very important that the parents, the non-custodial parents, uh, if you can't be involved in the registration process, still attend the school the first couple weeks, be a part of the, the parents' orientation, mm -hmm. um, and take a copy of the most current and accurate uh, copy of the custody arrangement. Okay. Uh, there, are, there have been situations where parents, um, the, the school had an uh, outdated or uh, mm -hmm. uh, maybe not correct custody uh, order, okay. uh, so it's very important you have a copy with you, that way um, the school will have the most current information showing that you do have equal access to the child records. Uh, the Alabama has a law that uh, says, that states unless otherwise written in a court order, mm -hmm. both parents have equal access regardless of the parent's custody arrangement. That's very important. Right. Um, so regardless of who has custody, both parents have equal access to the child's educational records and to the child's education. Right. right? Unless and, otherwise ordered, right. you know, through some sort of termination or maybe a restraining order or something like that, but um, that is that is bottom line. Right, and that's why it's so important for the, the non-custodial parent to provide a copy mm -hmm. of that order because unless it's, if it do not state otherwise in the order, once again, they allow the student, uh, the school administration to know that, okay, well, we have to abide by the state law. 
Um, right. Most schools is aware of the state law, but some they're not aware of this. Right. Um, but uh, one of the things we include in our um, presentation mm -hmm. is that um, you know, try to use the law as the re last resort. You right. Know, uh, you know, you don't want to just go and say, I have a right by law. No, just go and let them know that who you are, your parent, you, your concerned parent will be involved right. and approach it from that standpoint. And then if the school, for some reason, uh, don't want to quite listen to you, you know, mm -hmm. as a last resort, do uh, address that the Alabama state law does uh, dictate and, and um, say that all parents should have equal access unless otherwise stated in a court order. Right, and, I, and that is, that's very, um, uh, it's crucial to make sure that you establish that contact initially and that you, you do, um, school officials are really doing the best that they can. Uh, you know, I, I, I often joked with the, um, uh, mostly women that were working in the front office at my children's schools that they ran the school, right, because mm -hmm. they're kind of the gatekeepers. And so you want to establish contact early and say, you know, um, here's a copy of my, you know, you can ask, you don't have to just provide, here's a copy of my order, um, uh, my ex has custody, but you will be seeing a lot of me here. You know, I want right. to maintain access, uh, I want to stay involved, I want to be engaged with my child's school, I want to volunteer, right? right? Um, uh, part of, we've referred to the presentation a couple of times, and I would like to talk about what's in this presentation. The presentation is on uh, your website, which mm -hmm. will display the web address here. Okay. And it is very thorough and provides some really good tips for parents who um, want to maintain an, a, a relationship with the child and the child's schooling, right? Right. So, but you, you caution folks, they have to be proactive. Uh, it may not be just laid out for you and everybody gets copies of all the homework and everything that you really have to go seek right. it out. It is, it's a process. And as mentioned, one of the things that's on the front slide of the, our presentation, it says parents are an important part of the education process. Right. And parents are their child's first teacher. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think as a society, we have, we kind of uh, assume that the teachers uh, should be the, the teachers. Right. But the parents are the first teachers when it comes to a, a child. Uh, and uh, once again, the research uh, validates that. The parents that's not engage, mm -hmm. uh, it's reflected in the high school dropout rates, uh, behavior problem, bullying, and so far. And another tool that's available here in Alabama for the parents is the I Now uh, system program. That's and, a good point. Um, because even if the other parent is not willing and available or is not willing to provide the information, you have to use all possible, you know, exhaust all means to be involved. Right. And I now, you might have to pay a small fee to have access to that, but that small fee, I think, is worth that to be at least, you know, have access to the child records, know what homeworks, homework they have, right. know what grades they have, because um, even if the other parent is not willing to provide the information, uh, this presentation is designed to enhance the non-custodial parent environment because, right. once again, if that occurs, that child has a maximum opportunity to walk across the stage in, uh, during the senior year. They have the opportunity to be, uh, be an active, productive citizen mm -hmm. once they finish school. But absent of that environment, um, there's you know, the child, there's potential, potential chance they might be impacted negatively for the rest of their lives, you know. Well, and there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of environmental factors that affect that. You know, there, we, there's a lot going on in children's lives today, and so that foundation, particularly in our schools, uh, we talk a lot, I talk a lot about, uh, you know, the triangle between parents, schools, and teachers, right. uh, parents, schools, and students, excuse me, mm -hmm. and that that needs to be working, and I see your triangle <laughs> there. Well, let, let's do this. We're going to take a short break. Mm -hmm. um, when we come back, I want to really dig into this and, uh, you know, look at, at some of these really key points of not just being allowed to have lunch with your child or something, but some of some of the rich stuff that you have provided here in this presentation. So, if you would, stay tuned. Um, we'll be right back with Kenneth, and we're going to go into this presentation. Thanks. Welcome back. Um, this is Get Connected. My name is Tricia Crane. Right before the break, we were talking with Kenneth Paschal, who is the Director of Governmental Affairs for the Alabama Family uh, Rights Association. 
And Kenneth has been talking with us today about the rights of non-custodial parents in our schools. A lot of times our non-custodial parents uh, just kind of stay away from school, thinking that, you know, if they, you've mentioned to me that if parents run into a barrier, you know, they go and they try to get information from the school about maybe some school events, and if they don't get it, sometimes they'll just walk away because of their first encounter with a, a, a front office person, right? right? And not all front office people are aware that non-custodial parents have the exact same right to their child's educational stuff um, and events as a custodial parent does. Unless, of course, the, the I keep saying this, but you know, unless the, the parents' rights have been terminated for some reason. But there's, so there's an educational effort that needs to happen, and I know you're working on that. Um, and part of that educational effort is this presentation, which we keep referring to. Um, <laughs> right. It will be um, uh, your website. It's on your website, and mm -hmm. the website address will be here. But if you could, I'd like to dig in to this presentation. Oh, wait, I just remembered something. I wanted to clarify. I now. Mm -hmm. We were talking about I now. I now is the information now, is the full name of it. It's the information portal where all of a student's information is housed. You can check grades, it's online. Mm -hmm. You have to have a login. And sometimes, if the school is not aware that you're out there as the non custodial parent, they may not issue you a login, so you have to ask for one. And the, um, on iNow, you can see um, absences, grades, um, lots of lots of really good information that all parents should be paying attention to. Right. Um, not just non-custodial parents, right? Uh, mm -hmm. This is our job as parents is to pay attention to what's happening in our children's educational life. So, with that clarified, uh, let's dig in. Tell, we've talked a little bit about some of the, uh, the information in your presentation, but it mm -hmm. really flows very well. Okay. One, one of the things I um, recently re created this presentation is because, uh, to my knowledge, there's like three, only three counties out of 67 counties that actually even uh, clearly d outline that parents have equal access in, uh, mm. in, the, in the student handbooks, for mm -hmm. example. Uh, many schools only reference the federal law versus the Alabama law. Right. So that's one of the things we're trying to reach out and share with different uh, different counties, different districts, and ask them if they would include the Alabama statute in their student handbooks for the upcoming year, school year, and that will just help clarify what not uh, what the front desk, right. and also uh, will send a clear message to both parents, the custodial parent and non-custodial parents that. This school welcomes both parents because we know from research that when kids have both parents involved, there's a greater chance they'll be successful in their school academics. Absolutely. And, um, and one of the things we, uh, we emphasize is that uh, the non-custodial parents, you have to be persistent and show a genuine, genuine concern right. um, you know, when you uh, schedule a meeting with the school principal or teacher. Right. Because when they see that, they know that your focus is the child only. And the reason we say that because, well, I encourage that because many times parents, they try to focus on the other parent. And, mm -hmm. and the school environment is not the environment for that. You know, you want to be there for one reason, one reason only. That's your child. Right. And it's that persistence and genuine concern. I really picked up on that when I first um, found your presentation. And letting the school know you really are there for the child you are not here to do battle with your ex right. or your or you know maybe if you're never married with the other parent mm -hmm. this is about being involved in the educational life of your child right and when uh, as far as scheduling a meeting with this with your teacher mm -hmm. uh, one of the bullets we have here it says do your best to set a meeting with the teacher directly after school or in the middle of the week because many times the beginning of the week and the end of the week is the teachers they have a lot well the teachers have a lot going on all the time right. but the middle of the week is um, we have found that uh, from the feedback is from the teachers mm -hmm. is that's preferably the best time and if it's not the teacher would definitely let you know but they just wanted to come and just say you mm -hmm. know do not waste the, the, the school administration time you know right. make sure you you come prepared, make sure you have listed on your three by five card, your right. name, your contact information, include your phone number. And um, because um, even though it's 
the, the front desk may have the information. If you're meeting with the teacher, mm -hmm. some of the teachers, they have their own separate little book they keep in their room right. also. So um, uh, we have seen situations where uh, the parents have even provided a, already a self uh, address envelope with a stamp. You know that way you want to you want to try to maximize uh, every opportunity to be involved. So mm -hmm. what what a better way? I can't think I cannot think of a better way to show the teacher that you are concerned by right. providing them with already a self address envelope saying if there's any grades anything please just Thanks put it in forward. here mm -hmm. and just drop it in the mail. You know. Well, and one of the things, too, that when you're having that meeting with your child that you mentioned in this presentation is having that, sharing those goals, right, that right. you have talked about with your child, what you want for your child in that school year, because likely there's been a meeting with a custodial parent, right, and, right. and there's been some discussion. Sometimes teachers even ask for, you know, forms ahead of time. Tell us about your child. And if you come prepared to that meeting with your goals for your, mm -hmm. uh, that you've talked about with your child, you know, mm -hmm. maybe you have some concerns about that maybe the custodial parent doesn't see. You know, right. um, so that's really important. I thought that was a very good tip. And of course, truly, these are good tips for any parent, right? right. But these yes. are especially important for, for parents who are, who may have that additional barrier of access to teachers right. and schools. Well, it is because just the, the label and our goal, hopefully we can get rid of this label, you know, out of our vocabulary for us identifying one parent as a non-custodial parent. Right. That sent a very negative uh, message to uh, society, our community, our schools. Yes. And, um, but in the meantime, we have to maneuver through the existing environment that we have. Right. We think this document is very helpful. And um, we already mentioned about, you know, make sure you include your email address because right. uh, with technology nowadays, sometimes that's the, just a real simple, easy for the teachers sit there and just add your name to the distribution list and when it hits send it goes out to all the parents. You know? Exactly. And um, I'm trying to say there's so much good, great information here. Um, there really is. It talks about your ex and, mm -hmm. and one of the bullets I really um, think is great to just remind everyone is your ex may or may not be willing to help you as a non-custodial parent to facilitate that relationship with the school and your child. Right. But do not let that deter you. You know, uh, the matter uh, that matters not as the burden um, because it would rest on you as a non-custodial parents to uh, be involved. Right. Just don't don't just be defeated because your ex might be making it difficult. Right. Uh, you know uh, there are you have legal rights. We've established that, mm -hmm. and and there are ways. I think it's all about that relationship building, right? That we mm -hmm. talked about when you um, really want to uh, you want to let the school know this is not a power battle with your ex. This is about your child or your children. Right. And there are situations we have seen where the, the custodial parent, non custodial, they get along great. Mm -hmm. And one of the bullets here it says, um, if your ex is willing to help and will cooperate. No, all the better for your child. Absolutely. You know, so there are situations, there are success stories that both parents they they do um, assist each other. But there are situations where uh, it doesn't occur, and this document will help during those situations because it focuses only on being involved with the child in the school. Right. And um, and then your child, it says, um, your child will see your involvement as another example example of your love for him or her. Right. And uh, and a source of uh, additional security because sometimes kids, they feel that void, mm -hmm. you know, but knowing that both parents is involved. And and we talk about school because the child spends most of the time in school. Exactly. Um, so, you know, especially the non-custodial parent only see the child the first or third weekend, that's 48 hours twice a month. Mm -hmm. you know, so being involved in a child's school, even just eating lunch, uh, it just gives that child, a, once again, additional security, you know. Well, you know, making time, making the time, letting your child see you at school, making time to go to those events, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it might even be uncomfortable if your ex and you are having some, uh, you know, personal issues between the two of you. But the point in all of this is, like you said, children spend a lot of time at school. And be a part of that. And I know we, we, we could talk. Mm -hmm. and talk and talk about this because it's very important 
This presentation is on your website, mm -hmm. and um, I really appreciate you being here. This is a, a topic that doesn't get talked about much, and uh, I hope that we've been able to bring some information to folks who may be struggling with this issue, who may feel that they weren't entitled to you know, all the same rights uh, that maybe the custodial parent has. And children's, children's lives will be made better. And I really appreciate this presentation. I thought it just was put together very well. Thank you for being here, Kenneth. Thank you for sharing your time with us today. Okay. Well, thank you for the you know, invitation. I look forward to maybe we can do a follow-up sometime. I think there's a lot to talk about. So thank you for being with us today, and uh, we'll see you next time.